Dropping a powerful magnet down a copper tube is a popular science experiment. It begins by dropping a non-magnetic object down the tube to prove that there's nothing hindering how fast it falls. In this case, it takes about half a second to fall to the ground. Doing the same thing with a neodymium magnet of the same size and shape produces a remarkably different result. This time it takes a full eight seconds to fall the same distance. The reason the magnet falls slowly down a conducting tube is because of Lenz's law, which states that any time a conductor experiences a changing magnetic field, a current will be induced in the conductor, which will in turn produce a secondary magnetic field so oriented as to resist the change in the magnetic field through the conductor. In our case of a magnet falling through a tube, as the magnet enters the tube, the tube experiences an increasing magnetic field. So it's going to create a current which travels from left to right around the tube, which will in turn create a magnetic field pointing upward. These two opposing magnetic fields will push against each other, creating a net force against the front edge of the magnet. As the magnet moves into the tube, because the field lines are fairly straight, there is no changing magnetic field so that the current around the perimeter of the tube in this area will drop to zero or at least a very low value. As the magnet proceeds into the tube further, the field lines converge on the trailing edge of the magnet, so the tube sees a decreasing magnetic field strength. Again, because of Lenz's law, a current will be induced in the conductor, which will create a magnetic field to resist the change in the original magnetic field. In this case, the current will now rotate from right to left around the tube, creating a magnetic field pointing downward, enhancing the magnet's magnetic field, and actually causing an attraction from the tube to the trailing edge of the magnet. So, as it travels down, the front end of the magnet is getting pushed up against, the trailing edge is being pulled upward. So it's a push-pull situation, and that's what causes the magnet to uh, travel so slowly down the conductor. That's a very simple explanation, but as this following video will show, there's a slight problem with it. The magnet tumbles as it falls. The reason the magnet continues to fall very slowly, regardless of its orientation, is Lenz's law doesn't care about the orientation of the magnetic field, only whether it's decreasing or increasing. So no matter what the orientation is, the leading edge or bottom edge will always uh, project an increasing magnetic field, so it's always going to be pushed against, whereas the trailing edge is always going to be accompanied by a decreasing magnetic field, so it's always going to produce a current in the tube to pull up against it. And that's how it works. Watching the magnet fall down the tube in slow motion shows that it tends to stay in the center of the tube. The reason is the current flowing around the perimeter of the tube interacts with the magnet's magnetic field to create the Lorentz force, which is a force that pushes in radially all the way around the tube, keeping the magnet centered. A nice demonstration of Lenz's law is to take a magnet and move it over a uh, conductor, in this case a copper bar. It'll feel viscous as if you're trying to push it through honey. What's nice about this demonstration is that Lenz's law states that the magnitude of the force is proportional to the time rate of change of the magnetic field, how fast the magnetic field is changing. So the faster you move this, the stronger the force, and you can feel that. When you move it very slowly, there's almost no force at all. 
There are a number of simple experiments that can be conducted to explore this phenomena. One is to see if increasing the number of magnets in the string drop down the tube increases or decreases the drop time. As we've already seen, one magnet takes about eight seconds. If we add a second magnet, we see that the magnets fall in just five seconds, meaning that they fall faster. Three magnets take about three and a half seconds to fall. Whereas four magnets reach the bottom in a mere three seconds. The reason is that longer magnets have fairly straight magnetic field lines along their sides in the middle of the magnet string. So that the magnetic field is uh, fairly constant and there's little or no l lens force to slow the magnet down. On the other hand, the magnet's a lot heavier, so the force of gravity is stronger, making it fall faster. Neodymium magnets are rated by the N system. The higher the number, the stronger the magnet. For neodymium magnets, that can range anywhere from N35 to N52. So far we've been using N52 magnets. Let's see what happens if we use an N48, or a weaker magnet. It falls in about seven seconds, which means it's falling about 12% faster. N52 magnets aren't that much more expensive than weaker magnets, so for the greatest effect, I recommend getting them. Let's start with a half-inch diameter N52 magnet falling down a copper tube with an inside diameter of about 5 eighths of an inch. As we've already seen, that's about eight seconds. Let's repeat the experiment with an aluminum tube this time that's just slightly larger than five eighths of an inch on an inside diameter. The magnet falls in just five seconds. There's two reasons for this. First of all, the tube diameter is larger so that magnetic field strength reaching the tube isn't as strong. Also, aluminum is at best about 60% the conductivity of copper. Higher resistance means the current induced by the magnetic fields will be lower, so the resulting resisting magnetic field will also be weaker. Finally, let's try a copper tube with a 3 quarter inch inside diameter. That took three seconds, which is about what we expected. So, the conclusion is, the larger the tube, the faster the fall, and also the lower the conductivity of the tube, the faster the fall. Increasing the thickness of the tube wall should reduce the resistance of current flowing through it. That means more current will flow through it, making a stronger magnetic field to further slow the fall of the magnets. Let's see if this is true. In this experiment, I took the thinnest copper tube, slipped the aluminum tube over that, and then the larger copper tube on top over that. Let's see what happens. I estimate that at 16 and a half seconds. The three tubes in the last test didn't make good contact with each other. There were spaces between them. So for this test, I took the small diameter copper tube and wrapped it with two layers of uninsulated 18 gauge copper wire and then slipped the 3 quarter inch copper pipe on top of that to create an almost solid copper tube with a wall thickness of about 3 sixteenths of an inch.
that was 25 seconds. Had it been a solid copper tube, uh, even one with thicker walls, it's easy to see that you could get the fall down for a 24-inch pipe uh, to 30 seconds, maybe even 40 seconds. A big problem with all of these demonstrations is that you can't watch the magnet falling. This problem can be eliminated if instead of a tube you use two bars of copper that are mounted on a board and held parallel and just slightly wider than the thickness of the magnet. Drop the magnet sideways between the parallel bars and you'll get this. Being able to watch the magnet drop so slowly really increases the entertainment value of these demonstrations. I hope you found this video helpful. Thank you for watching.